Roll Tide and welcome back to Crimson Drive, driven by NASCAR as we're at Bryant-Denny Stadium in the Advantage Center at our podcast studio. I'm Roger Hoover, now pleased to be joined by the place kicker for Alabama football, Graham Nicholson, in his first year with us here at the Capstone. Graham, how's everything going? Roll Tide. Oh, it's awesome. I love being here. Super excited about this opportunity. It's just the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, we're certainly glad to have you here. Obviously, the winner of the Lou Groza Award this past year for Miami of Ohio. Uh, just how much fun have you had getting to be an Alabama football player and play your games here in Brian Denny? Oh, it's it's so much fun. It's such a cool experience. I mean, I played in front of like a few crowds on the road at Miami, but um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't quite anything like a home crowd at Brian Denny. It's so fun just the atmosphere and enjoying really every minute of it is it's so much fun uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, your coming to alabama and starting to bond with some of the different specialists uh, first of all james burnup uh, the punter mm -hmm. for the crimson tide we've seen connor talty handle kickoffs and then uh, we got to talk a lot about neil and pivot your long snapper mm -hmm. <laughs> how much did you enjoy getting to know those guys when you were in the transfer portal and then especially once you made your choice with us yeah, um, I really appreciate those guys because I know it's not it's not easy to take somebody into the room, especially I know those guys are tight. Uh, Talty's been there for a couple of years, but James and Neilan, you know, they've been there together the entire time. So it's a lot to ask for them to take somebody new in and really appreciate them. But I really feel like they've done that. And I feel like I'm really close with all three of those guys. Um, and that really means the world to me. It opens me up and really helps me be at my best. And without those guys, I, I wouldn't be anything off the field, especially on the field. Their, their work is very obvious for how uh, it contributes to my success. How they help you the most kind of off the field here in Tuscaloosa or going to school here? Well, James specifically, huge thank you to James. He's really kind of showed me around Tuscaloosa, showed me like what I'm supposed to do, where I'm supposed to be and when, and really kind of helped me get settled in. Cause I did like, obviously I know how to be a college football player, but I knew how to be a college football player at Miami. So kind of like him being able to teach me just the ways really of being a player here. And that, that has been huge for me. That's really good to see. And for you guys, I mean, there's so much time spent together with all different players and their position groups, but especially for special teams players uh, on the practice field. Do, do you guys pretty much do your own thing while the rest of the team is kind of scrimmaging against each other? How is practice laid out for all of you? Yeah, we, we get a little bit of leeway i'd say so we only really will have a couple periods during practice that are focused on us like a normal tuesday practice for me i'll have a field goal period and then a kickoff period and practice is 23 periods so for the other 21 i'm in theory doing nothing but we'll do stuff like sometimes we'll go in and we'll stretch in the weight room and get some mobility work in and then I, I enjoy doing like little stuff like I'll shag James's punts and stuff. Sometimes it's fun to get back there and try to catch him because he's so dang good. He puts that ball so high up there. So when Cole Adams got injured, did you raise your hand and be like, hey, I've been doing this in practice all the <laughs> last few weeks. If you need me, I'm there. I did. I did. But uh, that, that was laughed at. So, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, certainly good to see. And uh, for you, I'm sure practice is kind of like a game, too, because there's so many periods during the game where you're not doing very much. And then all of a sudden you're pressed into action on a field goal or an extra point. So how do you get mentally prepared to be loose, you know, having fun during the game, but also know when it's time to lock in? Yeah, it's I attribute a lot of that to experience as a kicker. Um, young kickers will go into games and they'll be nervous you know they'll be trying to be warm the entire game even when the team's on defense and stuff and for me it's kind of like you know I, I know when I'm going to be potentially used so I'll be ready then but in the times when I'm not probably going to be used you know it's it's time to let yourself mentally relax a little bit because if you try to stay wired the entire game you're going to be drained and it's just not even going to be possible is there a certain yard line the offense gets to that allows you to start to know when the time is to warm up and things like that yeah, by the time we cross half field, I'm always making my way down to the net. I'm going to start hitting a couple balls, but uh, it's it's kind of hard to gauge with the offense we got. I mean, they are so good, and they'll score from anywhere on the field. So I'm always alert, ready to run out there for an extra point. But in terms of getting ready for a field goal, um, yeah, the 50-yard line. That's good to see. And kind of sticking with the process kind of theme as well, uh, whether it's a physical process, mental process, do you have a checklist in your mind for every kick you have? Yeah, I do. So... I'm going to hit a ball on first down and a ball on second down. And then by the time third down hits, I'm going to be making my way over. And um, I always find James. That's my reference point. I just stand next to James. And then I don't have to worry about the, like, hearing the call or anything. Like, if I see those 
the certain few people running onto the field, I know it's time to go. And at that point, I'm in my own world. Um, I control my thoughts a lot. I don't let any negative thoughts come into my brain because that's really what screws you up as a kicker is when you let negative thoughts start to creep in and affect your process. So it's just the same thing every time. Uh, words on repeat, like trust your process, nice and smooth and you make it, and easy stuff. And takes care of itself from there, kind of black out a little bit. There you go. So it's led to a really great career, uh, not only uh, here at Alabama, but Miami as well. Uh, let's start about how you got kind of down this road. Were you a soccer player first that then picked up football, or was football always something you had in your mind? Uh, it's hard to say that football wasn't always something that I had in my mind, because like when I was five years old, I think I had a Shane Graham jersey, who was the kicker for the Bengals. Um, being from Cincinnati, you know, it was cool. He had the same name as me, but it wasn't really something that I was considering until my freshman year of high school, I had played basketball for the varsity football coach at my school. And the kicker had graduated and he was like, we need somebody to do it. So you might as well come try. And so I went out and tried and I was good at it. I was really good at it. And that's kind of my personality that I like things that I'm good at. And um, I kind of just ran with it. And I realized that I was a little bit more than good at it. I had some like potentially a future in it and continued to work and here I am at Alabama. Here you are in Alabama. I'm sure a lot of work, not only for your school team, but what about in the summer, kind of on your own, any specific camps you went to that really got you in better shape? Yeah. Um, kicking is a lot of your own personal work because there's only really so much that you can do at practice because I only really do one thing. I kick field goals. <laughs> like, it's pretty simple. But, um, yeah, I have a kicking coach in Cincinnati, Andrew Gantz. Fantastic. He trains a lot of the other top guys like Alex Rayner at Kentucky, Chad Ryland, who plays in the NFL. He just kicked a game winner, not a walk off, but it was a game winner yesterday for Arizona, which was awesome to see him do. But yeah, training in an environment like that with um, so much competition and just people pushing me every day, it makes it really easy to get good fast. And how much does he help you even now that you're in the season, you know, obviously miles away from him, but just staying in constant contact about everything that's going on? Oh, a ton. I send him my film from almost every practice still, and we break it down together. And that really allows me to avoid falling into like a big drought because that can happen with kickers where you'll be just fantastic. And then out of nowhere, it's like nothing. Like you, it feels like you can't kick a ball. And if I stay in contact with him and we stay on top of things, that doesn't really ever happen to me. What made Miami the right choice after high school? It was close to home. It was um, my best offer in theory. And um, it really felt like a good place to be able to go succeed. I started as a freshman and I knew that I had that opportunity going in. I knew that it wasn't going to be handed to me. I had to work for it, but I knew that I had a chance. And so it was really a unique opportunity, especially being close to home. And the COVID recruiting process was tough. So Miami was a school that I'd gotten to go and look at, see the campus. I knew a lot of people that go that, that went to that school and had enjoyed their time there. So it felt pretty easy of a decision for me. Now, when you mentioned the COVID recruiting process, were you having to really sell yourself to a lot of schools? Were you sending messages to coaches and getting your huddle tape out there and things like that? Yeah, yeah, that was a lot of it. And um, pretty much everything was going through Twitter, which is a lot of how recruiting works. But for kickers, a lot of the things that the coaches want to see is they want to see it in person because it's really easy to fake film. Like, I don't, I never did that, but you can easily take a video of yourself with a 30 mile an hour wind and kick like a 75 yard field goal and it'll look so good you can turn off the sound and make it look like you just have a cannon of a leg but it's just faked so they like to see it in person and that happens at specialist camps over the summer which is like kind of like a normal college camp where you go and try to get eyes on you but um they canceled all those so the only one that i went to was the miami one my junior year and i'd won that my junior year so that kind of lined me up but I didn't really get many opportunities. I was kind of just, yeah, selling myself. So when you get to Miami, what was the learning curve like of knowing how to kick in college? What were some of the differences between high school football than what you had there? That's honestly one of the things that I look back on my career and I'm like, wow, like I handled that really well because I, there was an older guy there who helped me and he did have pointers for me, but he wasn't traveling, like he wasn't there with me on the sidelines. So at the end of the day, I was figuring out how to be a college kicker by myself. And I think that has contributed a lot to my success is that I figured out how to do things my way. And I wasn't trying to like be somebody else or be a different kicker. I was just being myself.
and that really helped me be successful. And then last year, as it was going along, did you feel like you were having a special season that would warrant an award like the Luke Rose Award? Um, I, I'm not a big stats person. I don't like to look at my stats. I don't like to know what I'm doing. And I think, I can't remember, it was after week six or week seven, I won like the uh, mid-season All-American Award. I think I was 12 for 12. And I was like, oh, like, I'm doing better than everybody else, I guess. Like, if I just keep this up, I maybe I have a chance. And then I'd say probably three games later, I'd hit, I don't know, maybe six more field goals. And I was like, wow, like, all I got to do is finish. And I got this thing. And that's what I did. How special was award season and getting that honor? It it really, it's so, it's so cool. It's so nice to be able to get that, um, I don't know, just the award and the credibility really for all the work. Like, it kind of, it's it's just a fulfillment of all the work that I've put in. But I will say that it's nice, but it's not nearly as nice as winning anything with the team. There's no personal accolade that will feel better than winning a championship with a team. And you come to a team in the transfer portal that just won the SEC a year ago, uh, is undergoing a bit of a transition as well. And you were recruited by this uh, coaching staff once you got in the portal. What stood out to you about Kalen DeBoer and what the program he wants to have at Alabama? Why'd you want to come? Well, he made it very clear that although he was a new coach and he wanted to do great things, he wasn't going to change the fact that Alabama is Alabama. And for me, growing up, like seeing Alabama football, like it's just Alabama football. Like to me, it's the pinnacle. It's the peak. There's no school that can even compare. Um, I'm from Ohio, so obviously I had everybody wanted me to go out, go to Ohio State, but once, once Bama was in contact with me, I, I had my mind made up. I just needed to figure out how to get it done. Now, you and Kalen DeBoer have something in common. He's trying to replace Nick Saban. You're trying to replace or just be the next kicker after Will Reichard, who, of course, had a long career here, has a scoring record in NCAA football. Uh, have you gotten to know Will pretty well and stayed in touch with him throughout the year? Yeah, I, I got to meet him a few times. He's been around a little bit, and he's obviously super close with James Neeland and Talty and those guys in the room, so kind of like friend of a friend, but I respect him so much. He's did such an incredible job here and it's really hard to be good. And he was good here forever. Probably arguably the best kicker in college football history, but it's hard to say that there's much of an argument there. He's <laughs> so good. So good. And again, you're off to a really good start for the Tide this year. Uh, curious as well, we've talked about this with different uh, position players. Uh, so for thinking about getting in shape in the weight room, what's most important for you? What exercises, what uh, workouts are most important to stay? You definitely want to have a strong leg, but also loose and limber at the same time. Yeah. Um, so I had a lot of transition when I came here with the weight staff. Um, obviously they're fantastic. Coach Blue is literally the best possibly in the world at what he does. And I was used to kind of like what I said at Miami, I was kind of doing my own thing. And that included the weight room where I would listen and like obviously do what I was told. But there were certain things like some days we would be squatting and have practice the next day. And I was like, I'm just not going to do that. And um, here it's been awesome. They, they listen so much. They change things when I don't feel quite right. And they really make it so that I don't really have to make any of those decisions myself. I just walk in there and get told what to do. And then I do it and I feel great. And it's really the best, the best recipe possible for me. That's going to really serve you well, not only here, but down the road, hopefully in the NFL. Uh, what do you think could be after the NFL for you? What do you like to do away from football? Um, I'd like to live some sort of a laid back life. I could see myself like if I can make it in the NFL for a while, get a little bit of money. I could start like some sort of like a charter, a charter fishing service, deep sea fishing, just kind of chill for a little bit. Has that been a big hobby of yours your whole life? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big, I, I love fishing any, any chance I get. Okay. Where are some of your favorite spots you've been to around the world? Um, I did a lot of fishing growing up in Orange Beach, Alabama. Actually, my grandparents had a place there for the entirety of my time growing up. So my dad would take me out and we'd go fishing, whether it was on the pier or Deep Sea, it was such a fun experience. So you're here in Roll Tide a lot, even back then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Safe to say I've been a fan forever. Just not everybody knew that. <laughs> and now I get to kick for the Crimson Tide. Uh, we're kind of near the midway point of the season. Obviously, a tough loss this past week against Vanderbilt. Uh, how do you feel like this team's going to respond with what we see starting on Saturday with South Carolina? I really think the energy is it's all being focused towards the positive. Obviously, it sucks to lose. Nobody wants to lose. But this really gives us a unique opportunity to where it can open our eyes and help us become the best version of ourselves. 
we talk about it every week. We celebrate wins because it's hard to win. And this is just a great reminder of how hard it is to win. And with this reminder, we can take that and really flip the switch, become the best version of ourselves and push our way all the way through to the end. We look forward to seeing it. Well, Graham Nicholson, you're off to a great start with us here at the University of Alabama. Just thank you so much for the time you've given us here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Best of luck moving forward. Roll Tide. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Roll Tide.